Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, we're back for more 47 amp fun. Got it put on the scope today. Got some adjustments made. Got some idea of what we are dealing with here. Turns out it looks like this is going to be able to be a standalone integrated amp and that the 27 tubes have enough juice to power the 47s. One thing, not too much of a spoiler, was a little bit of a disappointment, but we're moving forward with this anyway. And then see what we can do. And at the end of it, it turns out that this doesn't work out. Hey, we gave it a good try, right? And there may be a reason why people aren't using these tubes anymore. Anyway, don't want to spoil that. So without too much yakking before we get going, let's jump onto the scope and see what this thing's going to do. Okay, so the first thing we want to test here is the scope pattern on the grid of the output tube. And what that's going to be telling us is what kind of drive we're getting out of this 27 tube into the grid of the output tube. Given that this tube is running at negative 15 volts on the grid, which is based off the 15 volts we see on the cathode, to get full drive out of this tube, we need to see around 30 volts peak to peak on the grid of the tube. And so now we're going to inject the signal into the grid of the input tube. We've got our scope probe on the grid of the output tube. And we've got the channel 1 set to 1 volt and channel 2 set to 5 volts. So let's put a signal in and see what it takes to get 30 volts out of the input tube. And I think this is it. We've got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Maybe just a breath more right there. We can pull this one up. That's exactly 30. And then that's taking one, two, three, four volts peak to peak on the signal. That's not bad. Most modern sources can put out that much drive or close to it, so I don't think we're going to have any issue there. And I think, looks like to me, this 27 tube is more than capable of putting out enough drive for this 47 tube, which is awesome. So now we're going to switch the probe to the output of the transformers and see what kind of drive we're getting out of this amp on the output side. So let me switch that over real quick. Okay, now we've got the probe hooked on the speaker terminals. We've got an 8 ohm load. We've got it hooked to the 8 ohm taps. We're going to change channel B to... 2 volts. We'll move this down a little bit so it's a little easier to see. And let's put some drive in it and see what comes out of this thing. And right about right about there we're starting to see some little bit of clipping that's probably about the max right there. So we're going to have 2, 4, 6, 8, a little over 8, just a breath over. Which, if we do the calculations, that's giving us, by the scope reading, about 1 watt of output. And I'm a little disappointed. I was expecting this to put out at least a couple of watts of power. Not sure exactly what's going on. I checked all the voltages earlier and the voltages look great. 
don't see any reason that the power output would be this low. We are going to hook it up to the Analog Discovery 2, get a better idea of the power output versus the distortion and that kind of stuff. But I'm running this tube on the voltage that it's saying is the maximum, which is 250 volts. We got the right swing on the grid, and that measurement on the grid of the tube was with all the tubes in place and all the resistors and everything in. So, yeah, if this thing's only putting out one watt, I'm not sure if possibly I've got weak tubes or, again, these are ancient tubes, have no idea of knowing like where these came out of or anything like that. So, you know, it's possible that the output tubes are just weak and maybe that's why we're only seeing one watt. I was expecting about double that, about two watts. So anyway, it looks really clean. The, if you look at the, the scope patterns, they look identical. They're, they're not all bent weird or wonky or anything, you know, that would make me think that there's going to be a problem with this amp. I am going to switch it over to square wave and take a look at that. See if we see any ringing. And got just a little bit of overshoot on the front. And, you know, from, from my testing in the past, never really saw that as a problem. I will say at this point, this amplifier also has no negative feedback applied to it. And normally adding negative feedback would reduce the power even more, but not sure. I'm going to have to do some more experimenting with that. So anyway, like I said, I like the square wave pattern. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the frequency up some. And see if I see any real anomalies. Like I said, there's a little, a little bit of ringing here. I think adding a little negative feedback will probably take care of that or at least reduce it some. But I'm not seeing anything that would make me think the amp isn't stable. And I think we're ready now to hook it up to the Analog Discovery 2 and see what we get there. Again, this is the first power on checking the scope. You're seeing it here live. So, you know, I'm not trying to hide anything from you guys. This is what this is live what I'm testing. So, we may have to do some more mods to get this thing where we want to see it as far as power wise, but at least I'm getting a nice clean signal out of it and the thing's actually working. So, I'm going to disconnect all this gear and hook up the analog discovery 2 and see what we see there. So, be back in a few. So here we are, got the Analog Discovery 2 connected to the amp with the Audio Analyzer Suite. I'll put in the notes below about a video where I go over how to use this software and this hardware to measure amplifiers. So we're not going to get into that today, but we are going to look over the results with this amp. One of the things I had a little problem with was one of the 27 tubes, even though it biased right and looked like it was going to be working fine, that channel was dead. So obviously that 27 tube is a dud, which I'm not surprised. As old as these are, that there's some variety or some variations in how these things work. So let's go ahead and do a pull on this amp and look at the power versus distortion. So here we go. And pretty normal looking pattern we're seeing here. And looks like right here at one watt, which is what I saw on the scope, is where the distortion turns up. And I mean you could say that I guess 1.5 watts at 5% distortion, that's getting pretty out of control. As you can see down here at the lower wattage levels, we have you know really low distortion. Even in a half a watt, we've got 
0.5% distortion. But then as we come up here towards 1 watt, this is about the max power this thing's going to have before you start getting distortion that's really noticeable. And I'm a little disappointed. Like I said, looking at the scope, I was expecting to see more like 2 watts out of this, but clearly, you know, it up here at 2 watts, it would be off the scale. And it's 10% distortion at 1.8 watts. I know a lot of times these older tubes, the power output was rated at fairly high distortion levels. And maybe that's what, you know, is normal here that it's making 1.8 watts at 10% distortion. They might have thought that was fine back in 1928. So I'm calling this a 1 watt amplifier right now. And there may be some other tricks up my sleeve here to try to milk some more power out of this thing. But as it stands right now with no negative feedback hooked up to it, that's what we're getting. So here we're going to run the frequency response curve. And we're going from 10 to 50K. Got a little bit of roll off here on the bottom end, which not real shocked. We can see here at 40 hertz, it's got a little over one decibel. At 20, we've got two decibels. So that's not bad. Real flat through here. There's 10K. There's 20K. So no high frequency roll off at all. And so I think when we get some negative feedback put in this thing, we'll probably get a little more roll off here on the top end. And we might boost this down here a little bit. This thing's probably going to sound fairly bright. So we'll be tuning on that. And then I've already run the THD versus frequency. And, you know, down here at the really low hertz levels, you're seeing 4 or 5% distortion. But then once you get down to, you know, 100 hertz, we're seeing 2% across the board. And this is at the pretty much the max volume level. And so I'm pretty impressed with this. It's showing these output transformers are doing their job. And so we've seen the distortion curve is basically flat, which is what we want to see. So anyway, got some tuning to do on this amp. This is a good starting point. We can see here at 1 watt, we're getting 2 volts RMS input, which is plenty sensitivity for modern sources like a CD player or a DAC or a nice phono stage that's got some drive to it. So I think I'm going to go ahead and build this out as an integrated amplifier. I still need to install the volume control and some other things. So I think we're going to wrap the video up right here. Well, as you can see from the scope and the Analog Discovery 2 test that this really didn't end up getting where I wanted it to be. We're basically getting one watt of power out of this whole thing, which this is less power than we were getting out of the little 6PM8 amp. But still don't know what this thing sounds like. It may sound divine, so there may also be some tweaks that can be done to get some more power out of this thing. Not sure. Haven't seen a lot online about these using these 47 tubes and an SE amp like this. And I have learned, like I said earlier in the video, that sometimes the two watts that they publish in these old manuals was at like 10 or 15% distortion, which for an old AM radio was probably fine. So we may be at one watt of distortion for hi-fi use. So that may just be what this thing is, but don't know. Still got to try putting some uh, shade feedback on it. That possibly could get the distortion down where we could, you know, drive it a little harder. Just have to see. I am going to go ahead and put the volume knob on this chassis. I'm thinking about going with the, it's kind of hard to see here, but 
this old school kind of number plate looking uh, volume knob, which I think will look cool. And then it's got this little hex shaped kind of knob. It'll definitely fit the theme of this. I was going to put a meter here in the top of the chassis, but I think I'm going to put just a little jewel light like they use on uh, electric guitars. Got a little orange one that'll sit right here with an LED inside it that we can adjust the brightness on. I think that'll fit the theme too and kind of look the right vintage for what we're doing here. And got to put the RCA jacks, which I'm going to mount on the side like I do on all my personal amps. And then go hook this thing up and see what it sounds like. I mean, that's proofs in the pudding. A lot of times stuff that maybe don't look fantastic like that 6SQ7 amp, and if you just look at the numbers, it doesn't look super great. But man, when you listen to it, it sounds fantastic. So anyway, still got a little bit of work to do on this. Probably got at least one more episode, maybe two. Might try to do some tweaks on this thing to get a little more power out of it. Don't know. May end up ditching these 47 tubes and these 27s and end up, you know, trying some different 5-pin tubes. Um... You know, I hate that the way this thing's wired, I hopefully I can find some tubes that are similar in how they want to be run and the, use the same kind of uh, cathode resistors and those kind of things. But, hey, we'll just, we'll just have to see. It's always something when you're trying to design an amp from scratch. Not all of them turn out fantastic. So, again, I don't want to pull the plug on this yet. It is a little disappointing that... We're only seeing a lot of power. I was hoping for two and a half or so. I know these don't make a lot of power, but hey, it is what it is. It's not going to be a 300B amp, that's for sure. So anyway, hope you're enjoying this content. I think this turned out to be a cool build anyway. It looks amazing. And who knows? And even if this thing only ends up putting out one watt of power with some full range open baffle speakers, might be something cool to try with this too to see what we can get out of a one watt amp so and i still think it just looks super cool with these globe tubes so anyway again i hope you're enjoying this content if you are please subscribe to the channel please like the video and we'll see you soon have a great day